Opinions are mixed on LED lighting, but for video work, they're utilitarian workhorses. They're lightweight, draw very little power, and they don't get very hot. They're also expensive. In today's weekend project, we'll build an LED lighting panel that's close in performance to $500 off-the-shelf products, but at a fraction of the cost. The core of this project is the adhesive mounted LED strip lighting. Ordinarily, these are sold in one long spool, but we'll be cutting and resoldering them into a rectangular panel, and then we'll repurpose a brownie pan to use as the housing. There's a lot of soldering in this project, but it's all basic stuff, so this is a great project to help build your skills. To build this project, you'll need the LED strip lighting, a power supply, the housing material, and some hardware. What you can't find at your local hardware store, you can easily purchase online. You'll also need a couple of basic tools. We'll start by prepping our housing materials. Cut the plexiglass down to a 12 and a half by eight inch rectangle. Then cut a 10 inch by six inch rectangle from your stock of corrugated plastic using a utility knife. Mark the location for four drill holes in the corrugated plastic, one half inch in from each corner and then drill the four holes using a quarter inch bit. Apply painters or masking tape to the four corners of the bottom of the brownie pan. Use the holes in the corrugated plastic as a guide to mark drill points in the baking tin. Start with pilot holes and then drill four one quarter inch holes into the baking tin, forming a five by nine inch rectangle. We'll need three more holes in the bottom edge of the baking tin, a quarter inch hole at the center for our mounting hardware, and then two more just to the left of this hole for the power jack and potentiometer knob. Mark and drill these. The Teflon coating of the brownie pan is great for cooking, but it's bad for the adhesives we'll need to put this all together. Use a rotary tool with a grinding wheel to remove the Teflon coating. You'll need to remove a two inch square on the inside of the housing, as well as the area around the quarter inch mounting hole onto the bottom of the housing. Install the four quarter 20 machine screws into the back of the housing and secure them using the coupling nuts. The last part of the housing prep is to use your grinding wheel to rough up the surface of a quarter 20 nut. Mix up the epoxy and apply it to the nut and then mount it to the inside of the housing. You can secure the nut in place using the ball head while the epoxy cures, though the ball head will likely be permanently bonded to the housing. Next, we'll prepare our LED strip for soldering. When cutting the LED strip, be sure to cut only on the specified cut points between the solder terminals. First trim off the factory installed wire terminal and then cut the strip into 14 10 inch strips. Prepare your connecting wires. Cut 14 segments of speaker wire, each measuring about two inches, and then split and strip each end. Twist and then tin each end, and then solder the wires to the terminal pads. Take care with the polarity of the terminals, and use a multimeter to check your work as you go. Disassemble the PWM dimmer and remove the PCB and the potentiometer. Use foam tape to attach the PCB to the inside of the housing on the area where we removed the Teflon earlier. Cut and then strip two short segments of red and black hookup wire and then solder them to the DC jack as shown and then insulate the connections with shrink tubing. Insert the other ends into the input terminals on the dimmer PCB. Then connect the positive and negative wires from the first LED segment into the output terminals on the PCB. Mount the potentiometer and the DC jack into the housing and plug in your AC adapter to make sure everything lights up. Be sure to check the dimmer functionality as well. Mount the corrugated panel to the top of the coupling nuts using Allen screws and washers. Then, working one strip at a time, peel away the adhesive backing on the LED strips and secure them to the panel. Finally, cover the ends of the plexiglass panel with masking tape and use the original holes on the sides of the brownie pan to mark matching holes in the plexiglass, and then draw an outline of the brownie pan onto the tape. Drill one quarter inch holes at your marks and then use a bandsaw to cut the shape of the plexiglass to match the tin. Then remove the tape and mount the plexiglass cover to the front of the housing using the remaining Allen screws, washers, and nuts. Your LED panel is now ready to use. You can use the ball head to attach it to any quarter inch tripod stud, and the shape of the baking tin makes it easy to attach diffusion or gels using binder clips. Have a great shoot, hit the subscribe button for more make projects, and thanks for watching.